Hello and welcome to the GraphQL tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about the main elements of GraphQL. I've created a preset of questions that I'm going to answer to help you understand the whole concept that stays behind GraphQL. So, what are queries and mutations? How to define GraphQL types? What is GraphQL schema? Why only one endpoint? And finally, how does GraphQL API works? After understanding those concepts, you will be fully prepared to continue coding and creating your first GraphQL API. So without further ado, let's get started with first question. What are queries and mutations? A GraphQL query is for your surprise a standard query, just like HTTP GET in REST approach. It can take some arguments to fetch more specific data and it can have also its own name. With GraphQL, we can determine own variables and pass them inside our query. It will be like standard HTTP GET with a parameter. What is more specific is that we can adjust what data we want to get from our query. I describe it in the first part of this tutorial and if you haven't watched it, I highly encourage to see it to understand this concept. We can also do some more advanced things with queries like using fragments or directives, but the whole concept is that it is useful when getting data from server. So let's jump to the second point, to the mutation. Mutations are kind of requests which changes data. So if you are familiar with REST, mutation is like HTTP POST put or delete. We can send a GraphQL object to our API and then transfer it to a C -sharp object and add to the database or modify or delete an existing one from the database. When creating a mutation, we add this object as our payload inside the parentheses and we can at the same time query the API with fields specified in search curly braces. It is very fast if you want to check if object was created in an SQL database, we can send it without ID and retrieve ID of this object. So when this request is back, we'll be 100% sure that the database have this object. I hope that I have clearly presented you this concept and that we can go further to the next question. And it is how to define GraphQL types. So let's get started with quick explanation of what GraphQL type actually is. It is like a description of a database object. We are describing how we want to get the data. The basic operation is to just take them from database without any advanced logic. So for this purpose, the field method with lambda function as a parameter is accurate. We can also make some more advanced operations and based on arguments that user passed with the query, select more specific data. Here, in the example, we are selecting how many payments we want to receive. If user added the last argument with value, we will call the method which returns the exact amount of payments. Also, without describing the type, user will not be able to get fields from database. So we need first allow him to fetch the data. Okay, we've got the second question about types. So let's jump to the next one. What is GraphQL schema? Oh, it's kind of easy question. GraphQL schema is just a container where we are registering queries and mutations. So I created one global schema because I have a small app and I registered inside of it the property query and the mutation. What is important that we can have only one root query and only one root mutation, and we need to define everything inside of it. 
The next one is, why only one endpoint? It's one of the advantages of GraphQL. We don't need to send requests to many different endpoints. The content of the request determines what operation we want to do. Besides that, if you are using GraphQL, you will have all available queries nicely described inside the documentation tab. And it's time for the last question. How does GraphQL API works? I hope you already know the answer based on the previous questions. When we are creating a GraphQL API, we need to determine what kind of data we want to allow user to fetch and how to handle parameters sent by user. From the consumer of the API, I think it is easier to use GraphQL API rather than REST API because he can determine what data he wants to fetch. Okay, so that's all in this video. If you like this video, don't hesitate to subscribe to be up to date with newest content.